Are you ready to turn your investments into retirement income? Listen in as Jeremy Kyle and his guests reveal ways you can make smarter retirement, investment, and tax planning decisions to achieve your ideal retirement. You will learn more about your money so you can feel better about your money and make better money decisions. Now, on to the show. Welcome to Retirement Revealed. I'm your host, Jeremy Kyle, and we're here to turn your retirement savings into a consistent income. And today we're talking with somebody that is has a profession I was not aware of until a few months ago. And I thought, this is amazing. We've got Kathy Schramka Heidemann here, and she is a daily money manager. Kathy, thanks for coming in. Thank you for inviting me. Now, this daily money manager, I read an article about it. I thought, this is amazing. It's wonderful for the right person. Can you describe to me what is a daily money manager? A daily money manager is someone who pays bills, reconcile checkbooks, monitors credit card statements, monitors uh, bank statements for fraudulent activity. Basically, the same thing as a bookkeeper, but we're doing it for individuals instead of businesses. But there are some daily money managers who do do business too. Mm -hmm. A daily money manager is not always a an accountant. A lot of them are people who were social workers or are social workers, people who are retired, like people who are CPAs and also just any kind of uh, service oriented person. And a lot of people, what they do is they cater their business, not just to daily money management, sometimes add their own situation into their business. Right. Absolutely. And, and who would you normally be doing this type of work for? So who I cater to is mostly to seniors. A lot of mm -hmm. other people cater to people like high net worth, people with disabilities, busy professionals, and people like that. Yeah, you hear about the sports professionals and say, oh, they're business manager. So I imagine their business manager is kind of doing the daily money management. But uh, the, the rest of us might need that help too at some point. Because like you said, if you're maybe a senior or, or perhaps having a, a situation where you're getting closer to dementia, then they need someone they can trust. And that's where you come in. Correct, that's where I come in. Yeah, now I gotta ask you something quick because you have an amazing set of initials, C-A-S-H. What, t tell me about that, did you plan that? No, I tell people that I looked for somebody with the initial H before I got married. So my business is called Cash in Balance. So yes, I and love it. It's based on my initials, Catherine and Shramka Heidemann. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, cash and balance. So we'll have a link to the uh, to your website on there. Easy to remember, cash and balance, and that's just amazing. Good for you for finding the 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 last name of H there to make yes. uh, make, make your initials cash. That's amazing. <laughs> and the the funny part is, I didn't even realize that until uh, after we were married for a while. I just started decided to start my business, and mm -hmm. then that's how I found out. Oh, about that's the initials. right. It was meant to be. Right. It was meant to be. Oh, good. Well, how do you come across meeting people? How to to help serve how does that come about for you a lot of it is a word of mouth also i have a, a, an ad in the uh, senior resources guides okay yeah and a lot of people call from there i have uh, lawyers that contact me who mm -hmm. find me i just had a call today for somebody who found me on linkedin and also through my website when people do a search the only problem is with daily money managers, they really don't know what a daily money manager is. So sure. when someone's looking for somebody, they might be looking for an accountant. Right. And what right now, what the uh, American Association of Daily Money Managers is doing is they're sending out a lot of articles and more information so mm -hmm. we get the word out. Well, that's exactly how I came across it. I think actually technically, I'm trying to remember here, it was in the AARP uh, magazine. And we've talked about that on the show that uh, anyone in any age can be part of the AARP. And so a lot of times you thought you had to be 65 and then it was a big deal like you had to be 50 maybe uh, where you get the card mailed to you. Well, I'm not there yet. Thankfully, not quite there yet. But I read this article that anyone can join the AARP. I thought, here's all these resources for seniors. We help people with retirement planning. I need to be a member. I'm a member of the AARP. I love it. And here I got to learn uh, some education, learn about daily money management. So they're... They, ADDM, the American Association of Daily Money Managers, I guess ADMM. But either way, they did a good job with their PR there to get it in the, the paper, and I learned about it, and that's how we got connected. They've been around since 1998, and now they have a lot of people who are doing a really good job at PR getting the word out. Well, it's so important, and I think you even told me once earlier when we were talking, you get a lot of referrals from the Milwaukee uh, County Department of the Aging 
adult protective services. You've probably heard of child protective services. There's adult protective services too. How, how does that come about for you? So I had a case that I had to bring them in. I uh, had a call from a caregiving company saying that their uh, client needed help. And so it was really strange. The day before I was set up to, what was really strange the day before I went to see him, the caregiver company canceled. Hmm. Okay. And she was acting very strange. And so it really started to bother me. And I have a really good intuition on things, especially when things are not correct. And I found out later on by doing some more investigation that she was stealing from him. Oh, horrible. So then that's how the, so that is how I started working with Milwaukee County of uh, Aging. Yeah, for sure. Well, even then, what's amazing is you you hear about this more and more is that there's more fraudulent activity and Sometimes it is a caregiver. Sometimes it could be even a, a family member. I, I'm going to ask you, but what are maybe some signs that somebody might be might be getting scammed? What are some things that you found that are kind of telltale signs that hopefully maybe people hearing this can say, wait a second, I need to dig in further? So a lot of people are getting scammed by phone calls. Big, mm-hmm. Like I was called in by another caregiving company to help one of their clients and uh Someone had called and said that their AT&T was canceled and they had to reestablish it. And so they gave them their account, their bank account number. Okay. And then they gave them the routing number. And all of a sudden, they kept on calling her and and asking for more money. Mm -hmm. So one of the big areas is phone scams. Yeah, it it sounds that way. Any, Any advice? How can we possibly stop any of that? Now, the interesting part I had found out is that there is a phone out there that has a call blocker feature. The only problem is that the phone does not work if they're in an assisted living with an intercom system. It will not work. Interesting. The way this phone is, is that if someone calls, they have to tell them their name. Hmm. And if they do not announce their name, the phone call will not go through. Oh, interesting. And so I had to buy that for one of my clients. Yeah. Then. Do you remember the name of that phone? Or we'll, it, we'll look it up too if we need to. One brand that I know of is AT&T Call Blocker. Gotcha. There's okay. other phones like that out there. Yeah. I'm thinking of through a lot of our clients are 60-ish. And they're probably uh, thinking of their parents who are 85, 90-ish perhaps and, and running into those situations. I had a, a person relaying to me that they had a family member that kept getting scammed basically she kept buying things she didn't need. And so she'd go through, even on Amazon, it was just a a fortunate situation, just her own mental state of mind where she'd just keep buying things. I think maybe she liked seeing the packages come in. And so it was a a little bit of her own situation, but then you'd see other things. Like she clearly was uh, targeted by a a phone caller and you could see that the scamming was coming on. So this lady's helping her relative out by looking at her her bank statements to look for, for odd things. The other thing that's very interesting is these catalogs that come out uh, oh, for okay. like Bradford Exchange and catalogs like that. I had a client that liked to buy items out of these catalogs. Mm-hmm. So that's another telltale sign. If you know, see somebody's mail and you see a lot of catalogs, there might be a possibility that they're buying too much. Okay. I like that. So the idea of the call blocking phone, and that, that happens a lot where you're going over by your aunt's house or your, your mom or dad's house and you're picking up their mail and you can see through what's what's going on there so that's yeah i hadn't heard of that one uh, if there's too many catalogs maybe it's worth investigating and the other thing is donations now i have a client right now that i i'm dealing with and uh, once you sign up for a donation you're on this list and so you constantly mm-hmm. are getting other donations and that's another thing that the, you have to if you see a lot of donations requests coming in that's another tail time sign that there might be uh, yeah and it's, donations in general are a good thing, but if, if people know that, so they know that that's a great way to go scam somebody, mm-hmm. is uh, that'd be interesting if you are somebody that's helping out your 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 aunt, your uncle, your your mom or dad, and you see donations that are repetitive that aren't maybe normal. So that's definitely something to start looking into. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good. Well, a few other things you you mentioned is that uh, sometimes the uh, daily money managers take on the power of attorney. I guess title 
what would be a difference between you as a daily money manager that doesn't hold power of attorney versus other people that that would maybe be a, a power of attorney specifically? I'm not a power of attorney. So I decided not to because I feel it's very important that somebody else is looking over my work. So if I have a client that does not have a power of attorney, I have estate attorneys that I work mm -hmm. with that I bring in who does that for me. And so I answer to them. Other people like CPAs, uh, Basically, uh, anybody who has fiduciary insurance will take on that responsibility as mm -hmm. power of attorney. I just decided that I would rather, especially with clients that have dementia, and most of my clients do, I'd rather sure. have somebody overlooking my work so I'm not accused of doing something wrong. Yeah, well, it, it protects you, I suppose, in your mm -hmm. business, but also gives a great model of, hey, if, if somebody is coming in and has that level of access to financial information, mm -hmm. it, it's going to have multiple parties that are kind of overseeing each other. And the other thing that happens too is that I work with the power of attorney. So I mm -hmm. have clients that I'm working with their nephew right now. Uh, I have a client that I was working with their niece or I'm just working with a, a family member too. They're out of town, they're not here, they don't know what's going on day to day. They're not there to go through the mail. So they bring me in and, and I work with them and I answer them to them. Yeah, excellent. Well, a few other things you mentioned to me earlier is uh, you actually help with special needs trusts, submitting bills to the trust because there's different rules on how uh, things need to be either accounted for or paid for, or even long-term care insurance claims. I've had a couple uh, situations I've run into. I'm thinking of uh, a few where the, the people got to a point where they probably needed to be on a long-term care claim. And because of their own situation of maybe their mental state of a uh, of perhaps dementia, I'm not diagnosing them, but uh, I got a feeling that was probably heading down that way. They're missing their bills and not paying their bills. And so you get this double problem of your things are going around financially. They might have missed out on getting long-term care coverage for that if they missed paying paying their bills. So that's that's great that you're coming in and helping people with those claims. Uh, they're they're owed. The, the long-term care company should be paying out what they should be paying out. And if you don't know how to file those, if you're in a mental state of mind where you can't file those, you know, they could be missing out on services or money. And it's not just filing, it's, it's making sure that they're being calculated correctly too. I found some issues where I had to call the and make sure something was corrected because they did not uh, pay out the right amount of money. Yeah, well, and theoretically, uh, you only go through long-term care maybe once, right? Either yourself, maybe it's twice if you helped out a, a family member and you, you know, they have to become experts all of a sudden in a family crisis situation, and you've seen it many of times, so you know exactly what to look for on those claims or making sure people are getting the, the level of, of uh, coverage that they're, they're signed up for. And for sure, they need to submit the bills, yeah. too. Yep. That's the big thing, submitting the bills. <laughs> yep, yeah. Oh, good. It's Jeremy Kyle here, and I know you're listening to the Retirement Reveal Podcast because you want to learn more about making great retirement decisions. I've created a free video course for you to do just that. Head over to 5stepretirementplan.com and sign up to receive this video training right in your email inbox. We broke down our 5-step retirement plan into bite-sized videos so you can get started on the retirement, investment, and tax planning you need to create a consistent retirement income. Go to 5stepretirementplan.com, use the number or spell it out, you'll get there either way. 5stepretirementplan.com. Thanks for listening, and now for the rest of the show. Well, it's, it's uh, interesting. You've got such a, a way that you're able to help people uh, out that's different than what we do. You know, mm -hmm. we're helping people make decisions about retirement and investments and taxes and Social Security. And then it gets to some point where maybe somebody doesn't have that uh, capability to make those decisions on their own. How would somebody reach out to you? Or maybe what's, what are some signs that you would say, okay, if you, if you see this happening with your relative, with your uh, close friend, when would be a good time or... Or what signs should someone be looking for to say, I got to get my my uh, person connected to a daily money manager? I think the best thing for if they have a family member, they part, part of the issue is when they're not, but to make sure you're, you're going over their bank statements, make sure mm -hmm. you're looking at their checkbook. Part of the issue too is a lot of seniors do not keep their checkbook up to date. Gotcha. And one issue that can run into is when you're not getting the uh, canceled checks back either. So knowing 
questioning bigger amounts on your bank statement when you see them because a lot of times they don't have any backup for it. But just analyzing the credit card statement and this looking over and then asking them asking them questions is one of the ways that you could do that. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Well, you've been offering us a lot of great information. Anything I should have asked? One thing that I would tell people is make sure that they have a power of attorney of healthcare, a power of attorney of finance in place. Make sure that if they have an investment account, make sure there's beneficiaries on the investment mm -hmm. account, and then make sure there's a P POD or a TOD on the bank account. Just make sure everything is covered. And then if you have a trust, make sure that everything is in the trust, all the investment accounts, just make sure all the bases are covered. Yeah, a lot less paperwork to take care of it ahead of time when somebody is of sound mind and body or still living compared to the opposite situation later on. There's one other thing that I'm finding out, especially with one of my clients, is that uh, back in the days, people would buy stocks from all different companies. And I have a client right now, she has stocks all, all over the place and she bought it from the company itself. Right. And one thing that if you ever notice that too, if that's happening with your, your family member, is that try to prevent that and mm -hmm. get somebody like Baird or Wells Fargo, get an investment company to handle it because it makes it so much harder to follow what they have, make sure that they have, you have all the documents. And right now I am struggling with a client that has this issue and it's very complicated to try to explain to them, number one, because their spouse was the one that was taking care of it, mm -hmm. why it's necessary to even do that in the first place. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. I, I hadn't thought of that till you mentioned that, but I'm remembering back, this is maybe about 10 years ago, ran to a couple that was more elderly. And of course, that's how you did it. Like in the 40s and 50s, you bought the stocks directly from a company. But here they are, they're having trouble even moving about. They're definitely having some memory issues with the one person in particular. And I, I added it up. It was over 60 physical checks are being sent to their house every single year from like 15 or 20 different stocks, which means that uh, we found plenty of checks that were uncashed. And it also means that there are zero beneficiaries on any of that. So we were able to take all those che all those stocks rather and put them into a brokerage account, which meant that all the dividends went to the right place. So they had it in their name and we were paying out those dividends once a month. So just once a month, it would go directly to their checking account as opposed to 60 sometimes a year, they would get a check and have to remember it. And they certainly forgot plenty of them uh, to bring it down to their, to their bank account. So that was huge for them. But I think even more important for their family members, now they have beneficiaries. I've done that before, help people that their family members have passed on. And to actually claim those stocks into your name is absolutely horrible compared to, there's a beneficiary set up on a brokerage account. It's just written down on paper, it's really easy. One thing that happens too is that people don't realize anything above fifty thousand will go that could go into probate, and that just makes it more more mm -hmm. difficult. So, that's one of the thing that I'm trying to work with my client too that has all these stocks is make sure that there's beneficiaries on any everything. Absolutely. And then also I work to do the same thing that you were doing, try to make sure everything is being direct deposited in their account instead of issuing checks for dividends. It yeah. makes their life a lot easier. Yeah, definitely a lot easier and. Uh, Lot, a uh, lot more trackable, more traceable to to make sure that their own money got to their own right place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. Well, you're in the Milwaukee area. I'm in the Milwaukee area. We're gonna have a link to your your website, which is easy to find anyways. Cash and Balance, mm -hmm. great website uh, to have on there. Cashandbalance.com, and we'll also have a link to the American Deposit of American Association of Daily Money Managers. That's what it is. I'll have a link in there as well. So if you're not in the Milwaukee area, you can find somebody local if you need that that kind of help. Uh, you shared with me earlier, what should you be looking for if you, so we, we know maybe what's going on with your relatives or, or family, friends, if they need a daily money manager, when you're actually going out and finding a daily money manager, what should, what should you be looking for there? What uh, qualifications, things like that? I would look and make sure that for me, I have to have errors in admission insurance. So I would make sure that they're protected in one way or another with errors in admissions, in case they make a mistake. So if, if something happens that they're... So another thing that I would look for is what their 
background is, how long were they, how long they've been in business. Good. So definitely uh, the the E&O insurance, that's important. And I think what helped with that background check, you said you've got to go through a background check every couple of years. That's because you're part of this organization, the American Association for Daily Money Managers. So that that might be a a good thing is, are they part of an organization? Uh, What's their level of E&O coverage? When's the last time they got through a background check? And it certainly would be nice to know their their background beforehand of how did they come into this profession so you can have an idea of maybe their strengths or, or weaknesses. I've seen former accountants or current accountants. I've seen lawyers that are part of the Daily Money Management Association. So just knowing that background, I think it's going to help people realize this is a, not just the type of person, but the actual individual that they're hiring, uh, what's going to work best for them. And I think the other thing is personality. Make sure that you click with the, the person. Make sure, um, because there may be issues that, that uh, come up because something sometimes it can get really stressful. And so you make sure that the person has a personality to be able to deal with, it's like me with seniors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's another great question is what's your expertise? What's your specialty? That's what we talk about all the time is if you're hiring a financial advisor, it ought to be in the specialty area that you, you particularly need. If you're retiring and the individual you're working with only knows how to help 25 year olds with student loans, uh, that just doesn't quite match up. So yeah, definitely uh, add that to the list of knowing what your specialization you need in a dealing money manager and the person you, you find that they actually specialize in that area. Wonderful. Well, Kathy, thanks so much for coming on. This has been so great. You've been shared a whole lot more with us. I learned a little bit from the article, even more when we were talking beforehand, but definitely more now that we're, we're sharing all this information with everybody. You know, for me, I am an accountant by trade. Uh, so, and I've been sitting in behind a desk for over 30 years. And it felt so good to find a profession like the American Association of Daily Money Managers. Um, I did, I started my, my career paying bills for Shamka Funeral Home and I worked my way up to control at United Way in Waukesha County, but I am a people person. Mm-hmm. So I'm so glad that I came across this because this, this fits me perfectly. Yeah, you've got your technical skills of, of the bookkeeping and accounting and making sure everything's correct. And it's nice to talk to people once in a while. Correct. I love it. Oh, good. Well, thanks again, Kathy, for coming on. And thanks, too, for listening to the Retirement Reveal podcast. We believe if you know more about your money, you will feel better about your money and you will make better money decisions. Thank you for listening to the Retirement Revealed podcast. Click on the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. Visit retirement-revealed.com to learn more. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Kyle Financial Partners. Kyle Financial Partners does not provide legal, accounting, or tax advice. Consult your attorney or tax professional. Representatives have general knowledge of the Social Security tenants. For complete details on your situation, contact the Social Security Administration. Kyle Financial Partners is a part of the Thrivent Advisor Network, a registered investment advisor. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning.